So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I catch the flu uh, this week, so if I have like voice extinctions, please <laughs> pardon me. Um, so, I'm here to present the work of uh, the Democracy Earth Foundation. Um, I'm Virgil Deville, I come from France, uh, and uh, the Dem Democracy Earth Foundation is an organization that is well spread across the world. We have people from everywhere. Uh, from France, from uh, Venezuela, from uh, the United States, uh, and I hope we will have some new recruits today in uh, in Belgium, other than Xavier, maybe. <laughs> um, so let's let's uh, let's start with uh, with this statement from uh, from Pierre Montini, who I think is a is a great way of trying to understand what is the political context we are facing today now that we have the internet. So, basically, we are 21st century citizens who are interacting with institutions that were built in the 19th century and that were built upon a technology uh, that was created in the 15th century, that was the printer. So, what, what do we do if we want to do uh, a democracy for the Internet era? Our, our approach is to try to, to find a model that is powerful enough to not fa fight against uh, something that uh, is going to be very tiresome, but to build something else that can make the existing model obsolete. It's a very good quote. If you didn't know it, you can share it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not mine. Uh, so uh, where, where do we come from? Um, I've been working on civic techs for a bit of time now. And uh, it's very interesting how lots of tools uh, have emerged. I have a friend who is working on a project that's called OGP Toolbox. And they found that there is like uh, 1,300 uh, tools for uh, horizontal organization, for uh, uh, movement buildings, for uh, collaborative decision making, for uh, col uh, collaborative law making and stuff like that. So lots of tools have been created and and uh, really people have seized the power of internet to make horizontal movements. But uh, if we look at the systemic approach of those tools, uh, we can't help but notice that uh, all those tools, they run on the same approach. Uh, it's, uh, they are hosted on a server, which is as centralized access, and there is one guy. Basically, I call him the king, because he rules over our data and the access to the, of our application. He basically can do everything we want, and it's a very big single point of failure, if you ask me, and a very strong limitation for the civic tech movement to actually spread up the power and, uh, and do something meaningful with these tools. So our approach is like, how can we build incorruptible governance tools that are decentralized, that you can trust, where we can take meaningful decisions, cross borders with between all citizens of the earth. Well, the work we try to do is focused on identity, representation and voting, and the combination of these three uh, are supposed to actually provide with an, uh, some kind of new model that can be used by everyone. Uh, how that work uh, uh, is... Uh, realized, well, uh, concretized. Uh, we are, so we are a kind of a software project, but also with, with, a, with a, a movement part, I'd say. But uh, the, our two main projects are uh, Sovereign, which is the, a liquid democracy app. You can find it on GitHub, it's, uh, it's open source. But also, uh, as we were pretty slow trying to, to code uh, <laughs> our application, we started to, uh, to write a, a, a paper on GitHub too, to actually share our ideas and what, what we think uh, we should, how we think we should try to build a, a digital decentralized democracy. And uh, we took, we took the, we, we are a, a crypto project, we, we try to leverage blockchains to actually decentralize those tools and, and provide with a, a trusted architecture for, for decision making. And uh, we, 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 we've seen like lots of papers uh, being published at the, as the initial coin offering movement got lots of traction. I think this month there, was, there were 60 uh, initial coin offering and we said yeah, the white, pa white papers are always closed. We never know really who collaborated with what, what was the key discussion around the key topics. So we decided to, to bring some transparency to it and we, we did our white paper on GitHub 
and uh, to show every collaboration, every pull request, every issue, every question that was raised and the conversation around it. And uh, it was quite interesting to see uh, that people uh, were interested in collaborating in, in that process. We've got like 20 free contributors, people started translating it. And uh, basically, it's called a social smart contract. Um, and it's made of three parts, a manifesto, uh, a paper, uh, which is kind of like the theory behind uh, a vote token that we would use uh, to actually implement in a blockchain, and the execution part of how we would implement that token in a, in a decentralized democracy. So as for the, the first part of manifesto, like lots of stuff was said before uh, around what is the problem right now? And uh, one of the problem is uh, how we access to media. This is like the US Congress, and more and more we have a polarized um, political representative system as people consume more and more content from social media and live in filter bubble and less and less conversation happens and this creates the situation we have today. So one way of approaching this conflict is today our, our polit political rights are enclosed to territories, to, to countries with this map, and they are basically, we have this tension between the land, which gives the political rights, and the cloud, which has our identity and our data. So, the technology that emerged that we think could uh, provide an interesting framework to build upon kind of a cross-border uh, democracy that could be implemented by any type of organization or blockchains because for, for those who, who don't know, it's the technology behind Bitcoin and it provides uh, with decentralized database where computing allows for everyone to have a consensus on what is in that database and, well, the, the spread of the internet through, through mobile devices. So to tackle the voting part of our, uh, of our equation, we say, okay, for now, voting happens through centralized system. Uh, it can be uh, on a machine or on paper, but with blockchain, we could like have a shared and incorruptible ledger that can be audited by everyone without asking permission. So that's where the vote token comes in. We thought of it as, uh, well, a crypto token, for now, it's implemented as an ERC-20 that runs on Ethereum, but we think it should be also compatible with any kind of technology as a framework to actually use voting tokens on the internet. And the properties is between internet voting as we know it today, likes uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, or read it on Twitter, is that they have basically no value. They are private, they are centralized, and they're just here to actually uh, fuel the uh, advertising economy when we could online do more meaningful stuff like organizing and and uh, and form political movements and we think that a vote token that is implemented in a way that we are using internet today well, I, we think that civic tech is tech we use every day so that's kind of the concept we want to use we want to provide a token that uh, is used to very simple interactions and the idea is to create some kind of um, I'd say political cryptocurrency and we I, I have this small table that tries to explain like what would be the difference so it's not for trades for governance uh, the the mining the, like how the comment the, the consensus appears is through attention of its member through a protocol that's called proof of identity uh, the liquidity is guaranteed through a universal basic income method to distribute the tokens. Uh, it signals a, signal, a, a social choice, and the value is time and information. So, uh, for representation, uh, our approach is uh, based on liquid democracy. It's meant to, uh, instead of having top to bottom representation, as we know it today, have a bottom-up uh, form of representation that uses delegations of, of votes. So basically, well, that way, we have people that can choose to vote directly on an issue or can delegate their vote to some people they know inside their social graph or some, somebody they think that is knowledgeable. So this is, this is not a new idea. 
the Pirate Party, I think, pioneered it uh, 10 years ago, and it's, a, it's, an, it's an idea that came back around the blog, and lots of people are trying to implement it. And uh, we still think that it's a very good way to actually create representation bottom-up uh, for people that are knowledgeable, and it's called liquid because you can always revoke uh, the delegation that you made. So you, ca you can still uh, take back power if you're not happy. So it's, it allows for people to actually be accountable for what they do with your vote. So uh, that's, how, that's what we implemented with the Sovereign software. So basically how we built it is as I told, we want something very simple that people can use every day. So it's kind of like Twitter. We post statement, and people can interact with it by voting yes or no and using uh, a liquid bar to actually allocate a quantity of votes. So uh, our approach of implementing liquid democracy is not uh, saying uh, I have one token per issue. It's saying I have an amount of token that I earn based on uh, distribution um, criteria that is chosen by the organization that implements it, and I can allocate as much as I want to every topic. So this allows for minorities, for example, to raise their voices on a specific issue that allowing lots of token on something. And the idea is you always have the result that displays real time so people can actually mobilize themselves uh, by using more than one vote. So you have a cost of opportunity. If you use all your votes on one topic, you can use them on others. But it actually gives a, a new dimension to voting that allows for actually waive uh, the importance you give to that decision. So this is like how we, we kind of thought of the architecture of, of Sovereign. It's a set of smart contracts. So the organization has a wallet and creates contracts every time it creates an issue, and people vote for one issue or one other. And the idea is that the winning option is, done, is the one that has most token, and it can open to uh, also budget by uh, unlocking some funds that can be stored in a contract. So basically, it's in contracts interacting between them. It's, it's for now, it's for, for much more for Ethereum, but we are we are not uh, like the one of our founders, uh, Santiago C. says we are blockchain agnostics. We like we think there are lots of uh, interesting innovation going on in the crypto space. Uh, Bitcoin is very interesting because it's basically unhackable and unalterable. Ethereum is interesting for its properties because it's programmable. But for example, some other cryptocurrencies like Zcash are very interesting for anonymity. So we are open to different implementation of, of that kind of token. And uh, the last one is uh, how do we deal with identity in a decentralized manner. So our ID actually comes from one of, the, uh, of our members. Uh, he actually did a birth, a blockchain birth certificate for his kid. So what he did is like he filmed his kid, he filmed the certificate of the hospital, he filmed the mother, which is behind, and the grandmother, and he hashed that video and put it on the Bitcoin blockchain inside the transaction, so it's unalterable. And we thought that um, it's very hard to validate identity in a, in a completely decentralized form, in a way you always fall back to centralized power that says, hey, this is the ID number for this, for France, for example, I have my national identity number. And we thought that how we could create some kind of easy and uh, totally self-sovereign protocol for identity management. And this is a first path toward it. So I generate my video, I hash it, I store it on a decentralized database, which is, uh, for now, it's, it's IPFS. I notarize it with a... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I have to go more uh, faster. I notarize it on a, on the a blockchain, and then uh, the network with a process that's called attention mining um, actually validates the users so that the, vo the the tokens don't lose their value if we have replicants inside the network. And uh, to finish, uh, I like the answer that uh, Michel gave about blockchain. That uh, for now it's micro capitalism. People want to train without the banks and provide the most liquidity. Um, and uh, I think uh, Democracy Earth is, uh, is an interesting project because it tries to bring back a social dimension to a, to a crypto project. And the way we allocate the token inside the network is using a universal basic income dynamic where 
if people are validated through the POI process, they get uh, on a regular period their token. And the idea is we try to introduce an equality variable inside our equation uh, that every time I, a new member joins the network, he gets uh, the, sh the same share as other networks that were present before inside the, 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 the network so that we don't have uh, people who came before that are much more powerful uh, than others. So um, that was it. Uh, thank you. Um, we are a community all around the world. Uh, we are very open to contributors, so if you want to join us, you'll find most of the information on democracy.earth, and uh, thank you all. I'm quite sure there will be a question. Someone? Yeah, there. Hey, uh, thank you so much for the presentation, the, the really cool work that you guys are, are doing. I was wondering if you have any sort of plan for the future, something like a roadmap or something that you can talk about and tell us. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the idea is that the, the paper is, uh, is the roadmap, so, but in a, in a more uh, short term, uh, what we are doing right now is uh, we just released our fir the first version of the software, and like, like you saw, lots of, our, of hypotheses are to be tested out. Uh, <laughs> like uh, be able to allocate as much vote on an issue and delegate as much vote as you want on uh, to uh, other delegates and uh, just like the Twitter-like interaction for decision making. So we are testing that out and uh, the idea of the paper is like eventually we'd like to do what we would call an initial right offering. So to actually fund the efforts of implementing that kind of decentralized network for democracy, we would like, we would like to offer our token uh, probably next year, but we are still in the process of, of building that. There is a paper, there is a prototype, and we are figuring out like how would that look. Like an ICO yeah, yeah. We just call it an initial write offering. Right? <laughs> um, I had a question actually. Um, you said that the distribution criteria for the tokens were chosen by the organizations, um, like the tokens to vote. Uh, that you could choose how um, heavy or something, so how many tokens would be, uh, how they would be redistributed along the people who are voting, or how does it exactly work, or am I missing something maybe? So, uh, can, can, you, can you repeat? Um, so, the tokens, they are redistributed, right? So they're, Based they're... on the organization, you said. Uh, I was wondering, how does that work, or isn't it uh, fully developed yet? So, so the idea is the way you get your tokens uh, is go, going through that proof of identity process. So like people know who you are. And uh, once you, you, you do that, you get a share of token that actually puts you in the same position as the rest of the people who are inside the network. And then on a regular basis, just like a, a basic income, you receive new tokens to actually continue participating. And you can also get tokens by getting delegates by you voting records. <laughs>